What is up my fellow Vault Dwellers? Welcome back to Cubebreak after too much of a break, but today is the moment you've all been waiting for. The epic finale of our Fallout building series in which I'm going to walk you through the completed Raider camp established in front of Vault 27, set somewhere in the Mojave Wasteland. Pay attention! After many months of hard work, countless amounts of bricks and tons of creativity poured into this project, we're finally ready to unveil the completed mock, which turned out to be the biggest and the most detailed build I've ever made. So it's time to put on your pip boys and take a dose of Red X as we venture to the wasteland one last time, so let's get started right now. <laughs> Welcome back. But before we jump into it all, first as usual, I have to say a few words because there's been a lot of going back and forth with this mock and I need to set things straight. As I said in the intro, I consider this episode to be the finale of this build as this was the first idea I had to make just the camp in front of the vault, but as you know, with the growth of this build, also the idea of making the interior arose. The question is, will you still want the same things when you have become a different animal altogether? Well, I think I need to postpone this one a bit. To be honest, I was facing a little burnout during this series with not having as much time as I would like to, and well, I've been making it for how long? A long time. Yeah, since January of this year, so I got a little tired of seeing the same build over and over again. Oh, I wanna shoot something. So what are we going to do now is label it as season 1 and put it away for a while. I know that many of you would like to see some other builds as well, so I'm going to take a break from Fallout and focus on a couple more projects and I will try to get back into making the interior of the vault in the future. Maybe when we get closer to the second season of the show. And speaking of making a show, I wanted to do something else for this finale, so not only the usual cinematic will be made in a slightly different way, but also I got inspired by another Fallout nerd with a totally different background, Scotty K. You know, this guy. So today, I will be stealing some of his lines. Not that serious. If you guys are into eating healthy and overall physical and mental health and want to have some fun while you're at it, make sure you check him out on his socials, which I will link in the description of this video. But now, with all of that said, I think it's time to dive into this beauty of a mug, so let's first check out the story cinematic and then we'll talk about all of the details I've included, so enjoy. Okay, here we go. War. War never changes. It's been over 200 years since the bombs fell and the society is scattered. Some living in harsh and dangerous wasteland, trying to rebuild society or just struggling to see another day. Some more lucky ones living in numerous vaults spread all across America. But as it turned out, most of these vaults were never meant to save nobody and were just made to conduct all sorts of experiments on their inhabitants. And one of those vaults is where we begin, Vault 27. A place not many know about that was supposed to be overcrowded since the beginning, with 2000 people living inside being a double of the total sustainable amount. The goal of the vault was to study how individuals would survive in such conditions. That led to years of inner fighting after which only a handful of inhabitants survived and had to restart their way of life. But those who survive learn to cope with the new way of life and manage to live here for the next 200 years until the reclamation day. And on this day, one of the residents was chosen to be the first vault dweller to learn about the post-nuclear world and pave the way for others. Little does he know, getting out of the vault will not be as easy as just walking out of the main door because the wasteland has its own rules. Just outside of the vault entry, a group of raiders made their settlement with hopes that one day the door will open, allowing them to take it as their own. 
Let Bider Overboss, a former Praetorian in the ranks of Caesar's Legion, they managed to make a solid base using all of the resources they could find by raiding nearby settlements with lots of scrap structures, fortifications and all of the necessities required to make their own rugged society. With all these raiders stationed here, armed to their teeth, it's not going to be an easy day for our dweller as his story begins. After all, the war on the wasteland is never over. And war, well, war never changes. Okay guys, so now that you know what the concept for the story is, let's check out the Raider Settlement in its full glory because I poured so much time and passion into each detail that I need to talk about them all. Let's dance. <laughs> Hit it. And let's start the tour like a regular player would, straight through the main gate which is barricaded by a standard concrete barricade on the right, just like we so often see in the games, with no brotherhood allowed marking painting on it, and on the left, the raiders went a bit more creative and utilized an old Nuka-Cola vending machine. All is standing on a very detailed snot row that I probably spent way too much time on to include all the cracks and holes, and of course we had some random scrap laying around, some weed sticking out, a fire barrel to shed some light during the night, and I even made a frag mine, just to be sure that no one sneaks in too quietly. As for the rest of the fortifications, we have our standard junk fences on both sides that may not be identical but rather inspired by the game, but I gotta say that they still turn out great, if not even better. Well, maybe not. Okay, so on the right side, we have some sort of a covered shack made with some scrap wood, of course, surrounded by old tires, which must be the most common trash piece we come across in any of the games, with a crooked roof over the booth, not only as protection against throwables, but of course also against the unforgiving Mojave Sun. And here is where I place my first teddy bear I've included in this build, because what kind of a fallout mock would it be without several of those scattered around, right? Looking from the inside, we have a crate filled with loot like some camps, dandy boy apples and some explosives, and guarding the station, we have a raider peeking from the opening looking for some potential threats. Besides the shack, we of course got a lot of junk laying around on this side, with a couple of skeletons from before the war, guess they didn't reach the vault in time, the lone wanderer bike from the previous version of the layout, and continuing the fence, a piece of a different type of a barricade being just a simple wired fence I made out of a net piece stretched between two posts. But here, the most important thing is what's standing behind the fence. Here we have our machine gun turret that for sure will help in defending the camp from any unlucky scavengers that want to approach from this side and behind it we have some sandbags, crates and tires just to have this part more secure in case the enemies will somehow be able to shoot through. Now before we check out what is behind all of this stuff, let's first take a look on the other side of the junk fence to have the overall idea of the entire outside fortifications. So we have a piece of a fence you've already seen in the previous episode if you're a regular on this channel, but this time expanded up with an additional walkway just to have another lookout spot for this little cam enthusiast. I forgot the f***ing cams. There we go. Some additional medics and custom made jets to keep our purple haired friends satisfied and we can get back to talking about the fence. So as established from the beginning, we have our beautiful picker up truck that the fence was built around. If you actually want to build a cleaner version, or this one for that matter, just a reminder that both instructions are available on Rebrickable, so I will leave the link below if you're interested. Behind the truck that is actually used as a relaxing spot for raiders that want to take a break with a zip of Sunset Sarsaparilla, I've placed another figure that is not a regular resident of the camp and that is the courier and her faithful companion Dogmeat 
just lurking around the corner and waiting for an opening to get inside to grab some of that sweet loot the raiders have stashed around. The law of the wasteland. Now moving on with the fortifications, I made a kind of a tower connected with a fence with an old school bridge from one of my Islander sets that fits here just perfectly, allowing the raiders to get to the upper part of that wall. The tower itself may not be the most complicated structure around, but still a great addition to the entire settlement, as well as being a place to stash so much more random items in, and the thing I'm most excited about here is that I was finally able to use this huge sail I had laying around for about 7-ish years, so I'm really glad I kept it for so long as it fits here perfectly. Inside besides the regular crates filled with random junk, I even added a Vault Boy figurine next to it and we have ourselves a sweet looking Raider variant of the most popular in-game collectible. Of course the inside part of the fence is finished up nicely as well using all sorts of different wood-like pieces, but let's finally move away from the fortifications and let's see what is actually happening inside of the camp. And the first thing we can see here on this side is a funny scene I just had to include with a punk cat that is about to get his butt smashed by one of the raiders chasing it. And why? Well, this is why. Instead of using this beautifully crafted toilet, the cat decided to make a number two right here on one of the crates, which if you're a cat owner, you know it tends to tickle some nerves. Standing next to the hammer guy, we have a small workout area with one of the teddy bears attempting to lift some weights and another one of those fire barrels you've already seen before. Behind you can of course already see the entry platform filled with all sorts of random stuff, but before we get there, let's first check out the kitchen area on the right side of the camp. Damn y'all ain't got me working up an appetite. To get to it, we first need to walk by a pile of junk that nobody seems to care about because one of the raiders even sat down here to enjoy his food and drink, but I made here a wooden pallet, a barrel with some bones, and even a clipboard as another in-game item I wanted to recreate. Behind it, we first have our food storage area covered by another one of those big brown sails, again with some containers, a bottle of Nuka Cola, a dead claw egg, and even a Nuka Girl poster stick to the wall of the vault. And in the actual kitchen area, we have a small table with yet another bottle of Nuka Cola, a slab of meat, and some mud fruit in a bowl. But here, my favorite piece is the cooking station over a fire pit that actually came out almost identical to the ones from the game. And I even managed to put a mole rat over the fire, which just completes this part perfectly. And of course, as usual, all the terrain had to be covered in some trash, stones and weeds, and another f***ing bowl. Okay, and now we can finally move on to the center platform, which is the heart of the entire settlement. What a disgusting idea! On the left side, we naturally had to have a ramp leading up to the tower, with some valuables stored below in bags and an old drawer, with some caps and a couple stacks of pre-war money. Behind the ramp, we have another one of my game accurate crafting stations, this time being a weapon workbench, and also a crate with some tools, and a cherry on top, which is a Mr. Pebbles poster to keep the crafting sessions more enjoyable. Now moving on to the right side of the platform, we have a small but very packed table I made using a small door piece with a bunch of weapons and consumables, and behind yet another crafting station that I'm sure that many of you will appreciate, and that is the power armor station with the rider modified power suit. <laughs> The station is a bit simplified as it was a very hard thing to make in this scale, but the armor on the other hand is something I'm very proud of. You've probably already seen the suit before in a simpler version that I showed at the beginning of this series, 
but I modified it now with a couple of parts to make it look more Raider like and it turned out just awesome. Oh and by the way, I guess this is a good moment for a special announcement. All of the crafting stations as well as few more elements from the game like the turret, the Nuka Cola fridge and of course the power armor itself are now available as instructions on my Rebrickable page, so if you want to make them for your own Fallout mocks, then I guess now is the time. The link is in the description. But back to the mock, we still have the central piece in the front of that marvelous Vault 27 door, which I won't really talk about more since you've already seen it in this series numerous times, and here we have the overboss's throne, and the main man himself sitting and sipping on a bottle of booze. I wanted the throne to represent the faction as best I could, so I made it mostly using bone parts, two more crates, a red torn cape from the orc CMF figure, and some swords and spears acting as a background. All is placed on a wooden floor support just to have the boss sitting a bit higher overlooking his minions, with a laser rifle next to him just in case, and we have a perfect centerpiece for a mock like this. It's fine! And of course, as you've seen in the landscape mid finale, there are also some details on top of the vault, but not much has changed here. Of course, we have our fun little pre war scene with a skeleton and his steady drinking buddy, which is an awesome Easter egg on its own, but there is one other element here that is new. And that is this fire ant that I finally managed to get on Bricklink, which is just a perfect animal to have here on the Mojave Wasteland, as you come across a lot of those in Fallout New Vegas. And another new thing up here is the addition of two super mutants preparing to strike on the raiders from above. One being the behemoth I showed you in that mid-season finale that I just had to reuse in the final version of the mock, and the second one is a regular sized minifigure being a super mutant suicider carrying a mini nuke that for sure is going to be a problem for the raiders. Oh yeah, and of course we can't forget about the dead claw skeleton lying under this beautiful custom Voltec billboard I made, which adds yet another dose of that fallout feel to the build. Now venturing inside, of course there is a small portion of the interior done, meaning the wall is finished nicely and the catwalk is here, well at least a part of it as you've already could see in the previous episodes of this series, but there is no point of getting into too much details about this section, because like I said the interior of the vault will be a topic for a different time. So for now, this will have to do. And there you have it guys, I think I talked about all of the details included in this build and indeed it turned out to be the biggest and the most detailed one I did so far and since it also became my favorite, I just can't tear it apart like I usually do. I will definitely continue the smoke in the future, but like I said I need some time to recover after over 8 months spent on it so we'll get back to it sometime around the second season of the Fallout TV show. I think that should be enough time to rest from this mock, build some other ones as I have a ton of different ideas I want to show you, and maybe come up with some original, not yet seen form of making the vault interior. To the future. To the future. And if you still don't have enough of LEGO Fallout, then you definitely have to check out my friend's Red Rocket mock on the channel Klotzki Zapałem, as he is finishing his build right now as part of our little collab that we want to display somewhere on an exhibition next year. He put a lot of work in his part as well, and it will be a great addition to my build when we put them both next to each other, so if you want to check out how he's doing, I will leave the link to his channel in the description below, where he already uploaded two episodes of this series, and the final one will be coming in a couple of days, so make sure you give him a follow. But now, I wanna thank all of you who joined me on this post-nuclear adventure, whether it's been from the start or somewhere in between the episodes, 
because I made it through all of these months mostly because of your support. And if somehow this is your first time here on Kubrick, then make sure you check out the previous episodes where I break down the build process step by step, showing all the cool techniques that allow me to make this plastic masterpiece. And of course subscribe to the channel and drop a like if you haven't done that yet. I will see you all soon in the next video here on Kubrick. And until then guys, as always, just make sure you keep it bricking.